Zysel is a telecommunications network equipment company. We've been in business since 1989. We started off with a data fax dial-up modem and moved through ISDN into DSL and now into new technologies including LTE and other network equipment devices. Well, I think uh, service providers have successfully leveraged hybrid fiber copper networks for a couple of reasons. One is the technology. Everyone would like to get to a pure fiber play. Uh, fiber definitely has better speeds and reliability than you get with just a copper network alone. And while we'd all like to get to wireless, uh, the speeds and reliability with fiber are definitely much higher to begin with. So going full fiber though, going replacing the copper from the service provider's point of view all the way to the end customer is prohibitively expensive still today. It's still in technology in its infancy and running that entire distance is prohibitively expensive. So with improvements we've had in copper technologies, uh, we used to run for DSL, we'd run ADSL on copper all the way. Now we can run VDSL for much higher speeds but on a short distance. So if you use fiber to go that first length and then VDSL to get that last distance to the customer's premise, whether it's a home, a business, or some other location you need to get broadband speeds to, then a hybrid network works out very well. There are a number of improvements to both uh, copper and fiber technologies coming. For copper in particular, improvements in VDSL include vectoring. G dot vector is a new standard that's being deployed, and it's taking speeds that we're seeing today in the labs, and it's moving those speeds out into the real world. And that's an amazing transition. It's one we just haven't seen in decades, uh, but it's a wonderful thing. So if you can build a network that incorporates vectoring on top of your VDSL, then you're going to get much higher speeds across every customer connected, not just one or two. So that would be one. Uh, we have another technology coming out in the next couple to three years, which will be GDOT Fast. So it's getting a lot of attention today because of gigabit speed. So lots of companies like putting out press releases saying they've got gigabit over copper. Well, GDOT Fast is that, but it's truly a hybrid technology. You will run fiber the first link, the few miles, and then you'll run GDOT Fast over copper the last distance. So that would be two significant changes, one available today that's just being deployed by carriers around the world and another one that's coming out in the next two to three years. We expect to see a lot of growth in fixed 4G LTE developing in the next year. Uh, currently almost everything in LTE has been on the mobile side and there's been great strides in 2012 and uh, starting into 2013. A lot of major carriers are talking about completing their LTE networks in the next year to two years. And that's all been a mobile play. It's been on handsets and tablets, laptops, devices like that. Well, once the network's built out, we're going to find there's a lot of capacity in places that's not being used by just mobile devices. And there are a lot of customers that are currently underserved by broadband technologies. It's expensive to get the copper or the fiber up to reasonable speeds for those customers. Satellite technologies are okay, but they're really more of a method of last resort for broadband due to latency issues and other difficulties. Um, and fixed LTE gives you an ability to have extremely low latencies with very high speeds over wireless. And it's not a technology to use everywhere, but for customers that are currently underserved in various areas, whether it's urban or rural, uh, 4G fixed LTE becomes a very good technology to reach those customers with true broadband speeds at reasonable rates. Well, Zysel is very proud to have picked up a CES honoree award for our LTE fixed wireless gateway. So Zysel expects to have a full product line of LTE products uh, fixed for the North American market within the 2013 timeframe. Uh, we'll have both an indoor unit and a two-part indoor-outdoor unit that will get even better reliability and speeds and coverage. So some exciting uh, innovations coming up in the digital connected home is the actual reality of the connected home reaching mainstream. Uh, we're starting to see service providers, not just in North America, but worldwide, actually deploying connected home technologies where you come home late at night and you open your front door and the lights just turn on in the first couple of rooms for you. Uh, you wake up in the morning and your window blinds have automatically opened because it was the time when the sun came up. They didn't open at 8 a.m. when the sun came up at 6 a.m. These technologies are actually coming down significantly in price and the infrastructure is entirely there. So a service provider with an installation team and the resources is able to offer their customers a full connected home at prices that are reasonable whereas just even five years ago something like that might have been in the tens of thousands easily and required custom installers. 
So that would be what I'd say is the major innovation is really the price points are actually coming into play. Products are available and uh, we actually have full service solutions that service providers can take a look at today. Home connectivity is something that's also growing in leaps and bounds. Uh, while access technologies such as hybrid copper fiber networks and wireless LTE are improving upon traditional DSL delivery networks, uh, we're seeing similar improvements within the home as well. For wireless, everyone's gotten fairly used to 802.11n. Uh, Apple technology just issued you know, their iPhone 6 that has both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz technologies using 802.11n. Well, we have a new 80211 uh, AC coming up this year. We're expecting the standard to be finalized this year. That's also running on the 5 gigahertz band where most wireless today is running on the 2.4 gigahertz. So that should have uh, less interference, higher speeds, and we're looking forward to some very good results with 80211 AC. We've got a line of products coming out this year to support that and that'll be available to carriers and consumers very soon. And in addition to that, we've also got improvements in our power line networking. Powerline is a technology that customers and consumers are starting to adopt in much greater numbers uh, in recent years. We issued a version in the last year that updated the speeds to 500 megabits on the line rate. And we have updates we're expecting by the end of this year, moving from home plug to G.HN, that will actually take those speeds up to gigabit speeds. So anywhere within a customer's home, a small business, where you've got a power outlet, that becomes your network connection point. So customers will be able to go to a store, they can look for a box that says it's got one gigabit and it's power line networking, and they'll know that that's what they're going to be able to get in their home. Service providers can know that they can take some of the connectivity, like for IPTV or other high bandwidth uses, take that off of the wireless space to get away from some of the interference, and keep that on a very clean power line network.